This is the first lesson on trigonometry, where we're going to recap um, what you should know already from GCSE. So we're going to have a look at the definitions of sine, cos and tan, and then we're going to have a look at uh, the exact values of those functions for the angles that you need to know, so how you can find them, um, and then you need to learn them. So, uh, in terms of how you saw sine, cos and tan, it's GCSE. They were defined in terms of a right angle triangle, and if that is angle theta, then the sine function, so sine theta, that was defined as the ratio of this length over here, which we called the opposite. We, we called that opposite because it was opposite the angle. So if this is my angle here, this is the side that is opposite the angle. So it's the ratio of this side and this side, which is the hypotenuse. So the ratio of the opposite and the hypotenuse. So we saw that sine theta was equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. We saw that cos theta, the cosine function, well we saw that was the ratio of this side and the hypotenuse. This side we call the adjacent. Adjacent is just a fancy name for next to. So this is the, the side that is next to the angle. So it was the ratio of the adjacent and the hypotenuse. And then uh, the tan function is defined as being the ratio of this side, the opposite, and this side, the adjacent. Okay, right, so that was how those three trigonometric functions were defined at GCSE. And you will have um, heard of Sokotoa, S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A, -A. so so, okay. so uh, you would have heard of that, um, and also different mnemonics and different silly sentences that uh, use those letters, um, different ways of you remembering which way round these go. Um, I won't go into any of those now because I'm sure you've been taught lots of different ways of doing it. But the important thing is you know that that is how each of these functions are defined. Um, you need to know the exact values of these for certain angles of theta. So for example, if I said sine 30, you need to know that that's a half. So if this angle here is 30 degrees, then that means that this side is half of this side. So if that there is 10, that would be 5. So there are certain exact values that you need to know. And those values are for 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. The way we can find them is by drawing out some, some common triangles. So uh, for the uh, let's, do the, let's do the 60 degree angle, first of all, because I know that a 60 degree angle, I can find that in an equilateral triangle. So if I draw out an equilateral triangle, okay, so if this is equilateral, I know that each of these angles would be 60 degrees. That would be 60, that would be 60, and that would be 60. Now, in order for me to use um, my definitions, sine, cos, and tan, I'd like, it to be, I'd, I'd like this to be a right angle triangle. So I'm going to split it in two. So that I get a right angle there. By splitting that in two, this angle here would be 30. Remember the angle there before was 60, and I've halved it. 
We can also see that these three angles must add up to 180. So if that's 60 and that's 90, that has to be 30. Okay, so I filled it, I've got my triangle, I've got the 60 degree angle that I need to help me to work out what these will be. Um, I need some side lengths. Now, in terms of side lengths, um, I'm going to try and pick some nice simple numbers. Um, I'm going to pick, um, I'm going to say that, because it's an equilateral triangle, I'm going to say that was 2. Now, just remember what my equilateral triangle looked like. If I say that this is 2, then that would have mean that that would have been 2, and that would have been 2. So when I cut this in half, that would make this side here 1. Because if it's equilateral, that would be 2, and that would be 2. So when I half that, this is now 1. So hopefully you can see why I picked that as being 2, because I can half it easily to get this. Um, so, if that is 1, and that is 2, I can work out this side over here using Pythagoras. So, um, 2 squared is 4, 1 squared is 1, 4 take away 1 is 3, and square root A. So this side over here must be root 3. Okay, right, we've got all of our angles, we've got all of our sides. Now let's fill in our table. So, 60 degree angle. Let's look at that, the 60 degree angle. So sine 60. So sine 60 is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So root 3 divided by 2. Okay, done. Cos 60. So filling in this one here now. Cos 60. We know that that's the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So 1 divided by 2. Or half. And finally, tan 60. That's defined as the opposite divided by the adjacent. So root 3 divided by 1. Root 3 divided by 1 is just root 3. There we go. So we've worked out the 60 degree angles. What about the 30 degree angles? What about this top line here? Well, I don't need to draw a new triangle because I've already got a 30 degree angle here. So I can actually use the same triangle to help me fill in the top there. So with this 30 degree angle, so if I'm doing sine 30, so sine is going to be the opposite now the opposite to the 30 degree angle is this side. This side here is opposite the 30 degree. So sine 30 is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So 1 divided by 2, which is a half. Okay, cos 30. So cos 30 is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So root 3 over 2. And then finally tan. So tan 30 is the opposite divided by the adjacent. So 1 divided by root 3. Now I've written that here just because I can rationalise the denominator here. So I want to rationalise the denominator before I put it into my table. So if I rationalise the denominator, so times top and bottom by root 3, I will get 1 times root 3 is root 3. Uh, root 3 times root 3 is 3. So, tan 30 is root 3 over 3. Okay, right, the 45 degree. Now, we don't have a 45 degree angle inside this triangle, so that's not going to help me for this next one. Um, but I can get a 45 degree triangle very easily because I know that if I have a right angle triangle 
And if I make it so it's isosceles, so basically these two angles are the same, then that's going to be a 45 degree angle. Okay, right, if it's isosceles, then these two sides are going to need to be the same. So I can pick what lengths I want to make them. Um, I'm going to, just like over here when I wanted to make it really simple, um, I picked the side length as being two, so I could half it. Um, I'm going to keep the side length really simple, and I'm just going to make them one. I'm going to make them both one. Um, if they're both one, then that means the hypotenuse would be root two. Again, just using Pythagoras, one squared plus one squared, square rooted. Okay, right, we're ready to go. So, sine 45. So, sine 45 is the opposite, divide by the hypotenuse. So, 1 divided by root 2, which we can rationalise. And if I rationalise this, 1 times root 2 is root 2. And root 2 times root 2 is 2. Right, cos 45, that's the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So 1 divided by root 2, which is the same thing as what I've just done. So I know that cos 45 is also root 2 over 2. And then finally, uh, tan 45. So tan 45 is the opposite divided by the adjacent. So 1 divided by 1 which is 1. So there we go, those are the table of values, uh, the exact values that you need to know for the trigonometric functions. Um, this is how you find them. Um, there are some other methods of doing it, but this is the best and easiest um, um, uh, way of doing it, in my opinion. Because um, basically all you need to know is an equilateral triangle cut in half, and an isosceles right angle triangle. Everything else is Pythagoras or the definitions, which you should hopefully know already. So it's just building on what you know already. There's nothing particularly new to be learned here. Just remember that's how you draw these two triangles. You can fill the rest of the table out easily based on what you know. Um, so, for example, if, if um, I said to you what tan 60 is, you'd need to know it's, it's root 3. You need to know that cos 45 is root 2 over 2. You need to know that sine 60 is root 3 over 2. You need to know these things. Um, it will make your life so much easier. Um, now you might spot some patterns within this table. You might have noticed, well, why is it that uh, these two are the same? Why is it that these match up? Why is it that these match up? This root 3 here, is that related to these in some way? So there, there are some other patterns within this table that we'll talk about when we look at the identities video, uh, which is, yeah, it's the next one I'm going to do. So um, if you watch the next video, you'll then be able to see how um, some of these functions are related to one another, and you might start to see reasons why there are some patterns within this table.